people, as the Declaration of Independence says, the people have the right and the duty to throw off such government and establish new guards for uh, the future of our security and happiness. It is altogether fitting this be done. If you don't know what the Constitution says, there's no way you can uphold it. It's the Cracker Barrel philosophers in Crabtree Corners, and it's the tycoons in Wall Street. It's all races, creeds, and religions. It's freedom to work at the job you like. Freedom of speech and to peaceably assemble. Freedom to own property. Security from unlawful search or seizure. Where's your warrant, Flatfoot? The right to a speedy and public trial. <coughs> Protection against cruel punishments and excessive fines. The right to vote. And to worship God in your own way. It is these freedoms that have made America strong. Okay, okay, so we got our freedom. But management's lousing up everything. Labor is at fault. It's ruining the country. My constituents, as your elected representative, I can assure you labor's right. Management's right. I'm strictly neutral. Labor, management, politicians, fooey. Oh, they can't tell corn from oats. Why? It's all right. Take the money out of the house. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Step right up, folks. Here's the answer to your problems, Dr. Utopia's sensational new discovery ism. George Washington said that government is not reason. Government is not eloquence. It is force. And like fire, is a dangerous servant and a fearful master. Thomas Jefferson stated very succinctly, he said that the, that the, 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 the natural governing state of man is not total freedom. It is not liberty as enshrined in the Constitution. Um, if you look at the history of civilizations across the ages, um, the vast majority, I'd say 90 percent, of civilizations have been governed by an autocratic entity, uh, a, 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 an emperor, a king. It doesn't matter where it is written or even if it is written. You know, you need to understand the difference between rights and privileges. A right is inherent. I can sit here and I can think anything I want. You can make a law that makes it illegal, you know, to think about circles. And I can sit here and just think round, 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 and I can just continue to break the law. And there's no way that anybody can know if I'm breaking the law. And there's no way that anybody can prevent me even if they know that I'm breaking the law. If you don't know what the Constitution says, there's no way that you can uphold it. And what we have today are uh, people in very uh, high power uh, places of power that uh, are laughing at people who bring up the Constitution. No, I, mean, I don't worry about the Constitution on this, to be honest. I don't, that's my, well, that's, that's right. Jackpot, brother. Oh, keep no, I, mean, I don't worry about the Constitution on this, to be honest. The, the entity, i.e. the Congress, who has the responsibility under Article 1, Section 8 for our money and our monetary policy, if something goes wrong with it, they can't point the finger at somebody they delegated the job to. It's still their responsibility and they need to take ownership for it and uh, we saw in the you know in the healthcare debate we saw the uh, the, uh, the uh, legislators coming home and being held very directly politically accountable for their positions on health care and that is the type of thing that these guys are trying to avoid health care the Department of Education uh, usurping the um, the National Guard and the, the state militias for federal bidding uh, passing laws governing interstate commerce that have nothing to do with interstate commerce. Um, having a standing army is unconstitutional, if you read it correctly. Um, the Constitution provides for a navy and that's it. The, the founders understood that the way we won the Revolutionary War was not through a large standing army but the militias and they understood that was the proper way to defend a republic was through militias. The only thing you need a standing army for is offensive military action. And so suddenly when the American people realized that the Congress, the, both the House of Representatives and the U.S. Senate, had become entirely unresponsive to the people, I think that made the people mad. I think, I think people finally realized, hey, this is our government, this is our nation, and, uh, and we're going to take it back. And I think that's what gave birth to the Patriot Uprising and Tea Party movement. 
If we were to look at a list of violations of the Constitution of the federal government, you could look at the Department of Education, you could look at the Department of Energy, you could look at recently the bailouts uh, that have been passed. The federal government does not have the right to just print up money and bail out companies, no matter who they are, whether it's financial service companies or automakers or anyone else, and obligate the taxpayer. Um, I do believe that the people of Missouri were, will overwhelmingly approve House Joint Resolution 88. Um, if and when that happens, I'm sure that the federal government, the, uh, the overreaching hand of the federal government is going to sweep in and try to tell us that we've done something that we're not allowed to do. The bottom line is, sooner or later, there's going to have to be a showdown. In the building behind me, we have a Health Care Act uh, introduced by Jane Cunningham, Senator Jane Cunningham and Representative Tim Jones, that uh, it's a constitutional amendment on the state, on the, for the state of Missouri, and if it is passed, and we firmly believe that it will be passed, it will throw up a wall to the federal government and essentially uh, give the people of Missouri a choice of participating in the federal uh, law, if it's passed, or not. That's precisely one of the reasons that uh, I've crafted uh, Senate Bill 587 uh, to permit the people, if they choose, to establish a commission uh, wherein the state can review federal actions and uh, seek a redress of grievances in federal court where the state finds that there is a federal infringement. In appropriations last week I asked uh, revenue, uh, what does the federal government uh, give, a, give the state of Missouri as far as percentage for us collecting the federal gas tax. And they said, nothing, Senator. And I said, so we collect that and we send them a check. Do they pay for the stamp, you know, on the envelope for the check that we sent them? No. So when people speak of the word revolution, it does not always necessarily mean a violent overthrow of a government. No, but unfortunately, throughout history, we've seen that happen over and over again. That seems to be the, the, the overwhelming consensus, but a revolution can take place between the ears, as a friend of mine once said. I think that's why the Department of Homeland Security is so concerned with militia members, demonizing militia members. They know that these people are educated on these topics. I think that the Bill of Rights in the Constitution is only a list of things that the government can do. It is not a list of what the people can do. And that's very clear from what the founders, the framers of the Constitution uh, intended. It certainly is not a list of the things that we can do. It may include some of those things, and it does, but it's not a list of the things that we can do. Taught in our schools today uh, is that there are two kinds of government, what they call positive government and negative government. You have positive rights and negative rights. Well, what's the difference? What they talk about, and I've got textbooks that say this, that the United States in the Constitution offers negative rights. And what they, what they mean by that is that the Constitution starts out saying government shall not. And what it means is that in this country, government is supposed to be under control of the people. It's supposed to be limited. And uh, it ha we have very definite ideas that our, our rights were born with, and government does not grant those rights. On the other hand, almost every single other country in the world, particularly the quote-unquote democracies, a lot of the uh, democracies that came out of uh, after the Soviet Union fell and so forth, all of their constitutions are what are called positive rights. It says the government shall. And what that means is that government grants you your rights that, uh, and, and whatever gang of thugs are in charge today decides what those rights will be. Hillary Clinton announced that the U.S. would participate in what is now called the U.N. Small Arms Treaty. Now this is being pushed by a great number of tin pan dictatorships, socialist states, and basically police states around the world as the way to control small arms trafficking. And Hillary Clinton agreed that the U.S. would be involved, obviously with the blessing of the White House. So basically what this is, is it's an international treaty agreement that is going to limit the individual rights of gun owners in America. And now, correct me if I'm wrong here, a treaty has to be ratified by Congress, am I right? There's no doubt. Uh, it takes 67 votes to ratify a treaty in the United States Senate, and, um, and that's going to be a tall order for, even for this White House. 
The founders set up this beautiful system 